In our last video, we created a corridor that created a trenching components or a mesh that follows DR101, kind of like this picture here. In this video, we're going to create another corridor that represents, I'll zoom in here, this typical section where it shows the floatable backfill. We're going to make a mesh with using corridors and we're going to create this trapezoid shape so that we can trim our original corridor meshes. So with that said, I'm going to open up a, a new DGN and I have one here called floodable transverse. And this again is a 2D seed file. Give it a minute to open. So the other thing I have referenced here in this file, I'll take a look here, is I have the geometry. Uh, I have the subgrade terrain. And I have referenced in that longitudinal corridor that we created in the previous video. You can see that here. So what we need to do for this corridor is we're going to locate this three foot outside the pavement widths so we can establish an elevation on where we're going to create or how we're going to create this trapezoid shape. It may be best be if we just open up the template that we're going to use. So here I have this template called flooded transverse and this is what it looks like. So we're just trying to create this trapezoid shape and it's, this is a very simple template. If I test this, you can see how I'm not interacting with ground or anything. That's because I really want this trapezoid to be huge. I want it to be outside the limits of our first corridor that we created, just so I can create a good trim. So I look at this properties for these points here. You can see it's just vertically defined as 10 feet. So I'm just going to drop this template in and this will be based off the baseline and we need to establish the elevation for this left trench and we need to establish an elevation for this right trench. We'll need to set that up first. So I'm going to use a feature definition here. I'm just going to do this draft, do not construct. I just go to geometry and offset and tapers. I'm going to do a single offset entire element. I'm just going to locate that inside edge of pavement plus that three feet. And in my case, that's going to be 29 feet. I'm not going to mirror that. And the next one I know is it's going to be 59 feet. And again, that's just looking at the standard and I'm adding the three feet outside my pavement width. So I have these two pieces of geometry and I'm just going to go ahead and name those. I didn't name those. Let's go to my properties. Let's call this left trench. I'll call this one right trench. And I'm just naming these based on my template point constraint names. If we look at that template again. You can see this one's just called left trench and this one's called right trench. So now I want to do is I'm going to open up a profile view of this left trench. So now I have this profile and I know I'm somewhere around in here in this 377 range. And I'm going to use this tool here called create 3D cut. And I'm going to select the corner methods and here it just asks me select the view. And so I'm just going to make this big cut. And you can see here is my 3D cut. This is the longitudinal corridor we created or have referenced. So I'm just going to go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller. Kind of like that. I'm going to zoom in here. I am going to change my exaggeration. I'm just going to have that be one. So now you can see this is my longitudinal corridor based along this left trench geometry. 
So really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a profile that goes a lot on the top of that porous backfill material, kind of like what we're seeing here. We need to create this elevation right here and right here. So what I'm going to do is just go to my geometry tools here and I'm just going to pick lines. And I'm just going to snap, and you can see right now it's not snapping, but if I have the profile view active and I go to my references, you can see it's not snappable, so I'm just gonna go ahead and check that on. And I'm just going to snap to the top of that porous backfill, just like that. Then I'll go to my element selection tool, and I really need this profile, and I'm just gonna grab the arrow. I don't wanna change the slope there, but I want to be outside of this, this corridor here so I can create that clip. And so I'll do the th same here. And that looks pretty good. Uh, I probably will just name this. I didn't name it. Let's call that left trench. And that's the profile that we'll use for that side of that corridor we're going to create. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the, the right trench here. Let's open up that profile view. I'll use this create 3D cut. I know I'm somewhere in here. There it was. Uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. I'll change my exaggeration. It seems to be a little easier for me. Again, I'm just going to use that profile tools. See, it's not snapping. It's got to turn on that. I'll snap to the top of that porous backfill. And here, I'll grab my element selection tool. I'll just change the length. And I just want it to be outside of that longitudinal corridor. I'll give it a name. Let's call this right trench. Now that I have those two profiles, I can create the corridor that's going to represent this trapezoid shape for this floodable backfill. So let's go to the corridors here. Um, let's do a new corridor, and I'm going to base it off the through roadways alignment. Let's reset for the active profile here. I'm just going to call this transverse trench. I'll select my template. Again, I want this one here. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, too much where I start and stop, but I just want to be on the outside of that. I will change my template drop interval here to be one in this case. And you can see here it drops that template. Now we haven't added any point controls and we'll add in the point controls where the left trench follows the left trench and the right trench follows the right trench. If we look in 3D, you can see that's kind of what we have right now, but we're going to move this thing on where it needs to be. So we'll select that corridor. Uh, point controls, we'll add one. And again, the start and stop is not too important as long as I'm on the outside of this, that longitudinal one. pick the point. We're going to do left trench first. The mode will be both. This will be linear geometry based off the left trench. And we created that left trench profile here. If you have a lot of them, you may want to call this left trench and then maybe a station. I will just accept through these. You can see how it moved that left trench point. So now we're going to do one for the right. I'll 
have this be the right trench mode again is both we'll pick the right trench geometry we'll pick that right trench profile and we're just going to accept through these now we should see here in our 3d view that shape that we're looking for and there it is now it does look a little strange right here but I'm not too worried about that one thing that we do need to make sure is you know I made this template quite a bit bigger so we could get a trim the one thing that might cause issues is down here where they're two intersector they're at the same elevation Let's see if we can I'm just going to change some stuff here Make us see this a little bit better. Right here, where our transverse trench here is meeting our longitudinal trench, right in here. I don't want them to be exactly at the same elevation. Again, because sometimes when you're trimming these meshes, it doesn't really like it. So what I will do is I'm going to change my point controls with the vertical offset and I'm just going to change them by a hundredth just to push this down. And we, we can leave this here open just so we can see that. So I'm going to go back to my corridor. I'll go back to those point controls. Here's my left trench control. I am going to change my vertical start offset to just be a hundredth. And I'll need to put a negative because I want it to go down. And I'll do the same thing here. And now you should have seen that move where now they're not at the same elevation anymore. It's just a tiny bit, right? A tiny bit, a smidge lower. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So this is step two. In step three, we're going to create another DGN, a 3D DGN, and we're going to copy these meshes in and trim them. 